Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. So in the last video, we went ahead and we set up our database. In this video, we want to look at HTTP methods. I don't know if I just said three T's. I meant to say two. HTTP methods. So HTTP methods, they, um, they consist of like get, post, put, patch. And most of the time, you're just doing a get and you're just grabbing some data. Basically, whenever you're not making changes to data on the server, you're not trying to persist something, you, you typically do a get. Um, and anytime you like go to YouTube or something, you're, you're mainly doing a get. Now, if you're uploading a new video, you're actually posting. And um, if you're updating your profile on Stack Overflow, you're going to be posting data to the server because you're changing it and that data needs to be persisted. And by default, all these methods that we define, like right now we only have one. We have our, our homepage method. And by default, it's only going to allow a git. So if I wanted to allow a post, I need to actually pass in an argument after the URL. So we're going to have actually, uh, we're going to create a new URL to post to. And it's going to say post user. And after that, we're going to add an argument really need one comma here and it's going to say methods equal get or post so we're allowing gets and post and really we don't even want to get on this because this is just going to handle posting our user and we'll call the method the same thing so we'll call it post user now in the index method that we had before we were actually passing down static HTML and we're typically never going to do that it's just uh, terrible Flask comes with a template engine which is called Jinja2 and Jinja2 is pretty good and we're going to go ahead and make use of that now so let's go ahead and import render template which is going to make use of so from Flask uh, import render template and we're actually going to return that now so instead of returning all this uh, static HTML we're going to return a template that says uh, add user.html and automatically it's going to look for your templates folder inside of your <clears throat> root directory so let's go ahead and add a new html file right now and we're going to call this add user and inside of the body we're going to do the form method equals post and we'll give it the action equals add user so we're telling it go to forward slash which is root directory and then go to add user so if we go to app.py you can see that that's not actually right it's post user So if we call it the right method, we're saying post user, so it should hit this method here. And we're telling it to do a post action. So anything inside of the form, which we'll say like input name, username, type equals text. So this is all just a standard crap here. And inside of a label, we're gonna say username and then we can copy this same line for the email. And I also want to give it the name. So the name is going to be the same thing as the ID. So username. And then down here, name equals email. All right, so there's our basic form. And now we just need an input type of a submit. All right, so if everything goes well, this template is going to be rendered using uh, Jenja. Okay, also because I copied this code, we want to get rid of name. We're actually not making any use of that right now. So now if we restart our server and we pull up our HTML, you can see that the template is now being rendered using Jenja, and we have this basic uh, HTML form. It looks terrible, but we're not worried about that right now. We just have username and email. So what we want to do is we want to update this post method so we can actually add a new user of data that's actually posted to this method once we hit submit on that form. 
So let's go ahead and do that now. So under the method, we're going to say user equals, and we're going to reference the actual user class object that we've already defined up here, which is what our database schema is created around. And then we're simply just going to put the two values that are going to be passed in. So we have the first value is going to be username, second value is going to be email. We don't have to add the ID that's done for us automatically, so you're going to ignore adding that value. Now, you're probably wondering, how do I get the data from the form that's posted? Well, that's what we're going to be doing right now. Um, all you have to do is we're going to reference it like this, request.form. And then we just give it the name. So this is a username. And then we're going to do the same thing, request.form, name, and then this is a email. All right, now once you actually populate this user object, it's not going to save it to the database. Um, so we actually need to explicitly save it once, uh, once we're done adding those values. So we're going to actually use our uh, DB objects. We're going to say DB uh, session and then dot add and then the name of the new user that we just created. And then we also then need to so I'm sorry, that's actually adding it to the database. So this is creating the object that we want to add. This is adding the, the object to the database. And then we're going to save it by saying dbsession.commit. So we did a lot of changes. And we're going to go ahead and run this thing to see if, it's, uh, if I'm missing something, because I haven't done this really ever. So for it to take effect, we're going to restart our server. We're going to pull up our page. Test is going to be test1 and then test at test.com. Click submit. And we get this internal server error. So obviously something went wrong. We have no idea what it was. Um, this tells us that we have some sort of 500 error. And then if we went over to our database and we refreshed everything, if we looked inside of our users, we can right click and say view data view top 500 to top 100 you can see nothing was posted so um, something went wrong something's definitely not right and um, the problem that we have right now is that we actually don't have the server turned on to give us any sort of useful feedback if there is a problem so we're going to look at turning on debug mode and we do that by actually going up to before we actually run our app we'll just put it underneath the config actually and we'll say app.debug equal true and that way we restart this thing. We'll see if we can get any sort of helpful message. So you can see debugger is now active. So hopefully we'll get a better message than what we had before. So if I said submit, and you can see name request is not defined. So obviously for developer sanity, it's good to have this debug mode. It has this nice little pretty error that tells you what the problem is instead of giving the generic 500. If you're in the production environment, you, you don't want to give a hacker any sort of information that they could try to exploit your website with. So that's why they give you just a standard 500. Even though Flask itself knows what the problem is, um, it's not going to release that information because that will cause a problem. So what it's saying is we need to import the, Flask, uh, the request object from Flask. And this allows us to get the whole request body that's posted with that form. And then from that, that body that's posted, we actually can reference the username portion of the body and the email portion of the body. And that's just how typical forms are posted and everything in a web world. So let's go ahead and do this again. We probably have to restart the server. So it's actually waiting. It might be choked up. We probably should have restarted it. I'm going to do that. Now this says method not allowed, and the reason why is because Post user, you can only access it via a post. And right now we're not posting it. We're using the browser, and it's just doing a simple get. And we said only post methods are allowed. And that's really the way we want it because, I mean, that, that, that method is only, you know, looking at posted data. So anyway, let's try this again. So 
So now we get a new message that says view function did not return a response. And these are all good error messages because this tells us a lot about how Flask works. Every request that Flask gets, it expects to return a response object. And what we did is we added data to the database, but then we never returned anything, and that caused the error. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the data in our database because we had a chance to actually save it, but then it blew up after that because it said, oh, shit, you didn't return anything. So you always have to return some sort of response back. And what we wanted to do probably is say like return redirect and then we could just simply give it the name of um, or the location of the URL that we're looking uh, to redirect to. So it's going to match the home page. So if everything went well, it'll go right back to the form. So in order to be able to use redirect, we actually need to import that as well. So after request, we're going to say... Um, Yeah, that should work right there. And you know what? We can actually double up all this stuff. We don't. It gets sloppy when you have all that. You can double it all up just like this and get rid of that. Technically, you could even put Flask over here too, but we're not going to do that. So let's go ahead and see if we get a better result now. We did get a successful save to the database, which is cool. So let's go back to our home page. Now we're going to add test two test2 at gmail.com URL4 is not defined. Son of a bitch. We've needed um, Oh yeah, we're using both. Okay, yeah. So this is also a special method that allows you to redirect specifically to But you guys get the point. So Flask obviously needs to explicitly get imported the, the portions of the framework that you plan on using. It keeps things lean and mean. So test2 is also going to be saved in there. So now we're going to be test3 at gmail.com. So I've actually never used that method before. So this is uh, raw and uncut as far as how this is going right now. So I think I needed to pass in the index instead. So instead of giving it the actual route, it's looking for the name of the view, which is index. So I apologize for all this. This is a good way to learn, though. I mean, typically you learn by making mistakes. And I'm actually brand new to Flask and everything. I'm just kind of bringing expertise from ASP and um, Django into the Flask community here. So now you can see the redirect works. We don't have any blowups and everything. If we checked our database and we refresh this data, we're going to have several users now, including the fourth that we just added. So things are looking good. If we tried to add um, you know, duplicated data, so test one and then test, which I'll do test two. So we should get some sort of an error message here because integrity error means um, you know, we, we're not allowed the duplicates, which is what we want. Because we tried to duplicate uh, request two, and you can see if we refresh the database, SQL Alchemy did not allow the um, duplicate entry to go in. So that's really awesome because you don't want duplicate users or duplicate emails in your database. All right, guys. Um, so that's how we we query SQL Alchemy, uh, or query using SQL Alchemy and Flask and Python 3.5. Thanks for tuning into this series. Please upvote this thing. Share it if you would. Uh, positive feedback allows me to know whether or not I should continue to try to pursue the series. And then negative feedback is also a good way for me to learn as well. So um, yeah, just let me know if you guys have any questions. And thanks for watching. Good night. Bye.